Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial. Today we will be following up on how to create connections in Apache Guacamole. First, we're going to start with Windows Connections and then we're going to go to SSH for Linux or um, Unix devices and then we're going to end the video. The first thing we want to do is log into our Guacamole instance. Once you're logged into your Guacamole instance, you want to go to your username, you go to settings, and you're going to click on connections. In order for us to be able to create a new connection, we're going to have to select the option new connection. And we'll start at the top by giving our new connection a name. So we'll call this Windows. And then on the protocol, you want to select RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol. And once that's done, you want to go all the way down onto Parameters. And the next thing we have to configure is the network information of the machine that we're trying to connect to. So we're going to use the IP address. If you have um, an internal DNS, you can use the host name. So I'm going to do 10.100.20.24. The IP address should be 3389 for RDP protocol unless you're using a custom port that has been specified by yourself. For most of you, it's going to be 3389. The next thing we want to make sure we have is the username, password, and the domain. You can leave this blank as well as it's going to prompt the users to enter the username, the password, and the domain they're trying to connect to if this is a domain joint computer. The other thing we're going to configure here is the security mode. For most of you, it's going to be NLA because when you enable remote desktop, it's going to ask you if you want to um, set up the network level authentication as part of turning on the remote desktop protocol in the settings in your virtual machine or on your computer. It is always advisable to use the NLA security mode, but whichever security mode you have set up, TLS, RDP encryption, you can select that, but for this, I'm going to use NLA. Or you can use any for Guacamole to automatically negotiate that. The last thing we're going to do here is select the option Ignore Server Certificate. Unless you installed a third-party certificate which is trusted, you're always going to select this option to Ignore Server Certificate. Once we're done, we're going to go all the way to the bottom and select Save. Once we're done with saving the connection, we're going to head back to the home page and if we click on the connection we just created, it should prompt us for username, password, and a domain name. If I do go ahead and put in my username, my password, and my domain name, you can see I was successfully logged in to my Windows computer. Next, we're going to learn how to create SSH connections using Apache Guacamole. So once you're logged into your Guacamole instance, you want to go on your username, you go to settings and you go to connections. Once you get to connections, you want to select new options or new connections and you want to change the protocol to SSH. So once that's done, you're going to give your connection a name, we'll call this SSH. And we're going to head back down to the parameters option. In here, you want to put in the host name or the IP address of the machine you're trying to connect to using SSH. So we'll do 10.100.20.10. And the port, we're going to do 22. Okay. And once that's done, you can either specify a username and password or you can do the private key at this point we're not going to configure any username and password because we want guacamole to prompt us for the user credentials 
So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and I'll select the save option and then I'll go back to my username and I'll select home and now I have the connection SSH on my home page. If I select the SSH connection, it's going to ask me to log on as a user. So I'm going to put in the username and then it's going to prompt me for the password and I'm going to enter the password. And you see, I was able to successfully log log on into my SSH server. Another way we can configure Apache Guacamole connections is by making Apache Guacamole to be able to use the user's credentials that they use to log in to Guacamole to be able to authenticate them to these connections without having to prompt them every time for username and password. To be able to do this, your Guacamole server has to either have an LDAP connection or if LDAP connection, if those machines are domain joint, the users have to be able to use their domain credentials to authenticate into Guacamole in the first place. Or the, if you're creating users locally in Guacamole, those same user account names and password need to correspond to the devices you're trying to connect to. So that way Guacamole can successfully pass those credentials back to the machine. In order for us to do that, if you look at the Guacamole documentation that I have put down in the description below of this video, we have some parameter tokens that we can use in Guacamole. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, the ones we're going to focus on them today are the Guac username and Guac password. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go back in our connections. We want to go back to settings connection and if we go to windows we're going to go down to where it has authentication and we're going to paste the guac username token the same we're going to do for password we're going to do that and we're going to paste it in here for the domain if your computers are not domain joint you don't have to worry about putting in the domain name even if the domain joint if you put in the domain name it's just if you don't put in the domain name it's just going to prompt the user to put in the domain that they're trying to log into if your computer isn't or is not domain domain joint you can ignore this option and it's just going to automatically log them in as well so i'm going to go down and save that if I head back to my home page, you can see if I try to log in now to Windows, Guacamole was able to successfully log me into the Windows computer without prompting me for username and password because those were just passed onto the remote desktop connection. And this brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. If you have any questions, you can also leave it down at the comment section below. And thank you for watching once again. Have a great day.